Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me. This is Game God Fluent, bringing you episode 24 of Let's Play Sword Coast Legends. Hope you all are doing well. Um, it's already nighttime of my rest day. Uh, basically, my three day Sword Coast Legends adventure doesn't technically start until tomorrow because I like to schedule these things just to be a little more on top of, uh, give me a little bit more of a reason to, you know, really do it and set it in stone. Um, actually going back to these older LPs and, and updating them and stuff, which I find a lot of fun when I get into it. But, um, yeah, it's actually nighttime of my rest day and I did not get a chance to play much today. I played episode 23 earlier and just, uh, yeah, have not had a chance to get into episode 24, but here we are. We're in Luskin. Uh, today we're going to probably set up the potions bar. Um, boy, I don't know. We're going to have to see what we have to do. Still quite a bit of um, refresher course going on. Um, hmm. I'm going to go with the same group. I'm going to go with Jarhild. Why is my... Why is the sound off? Did I do something? Um... Um, audio? Oh, that's right. I muted everything. Okay. Alright, so T grabs the whole team. Um... Let's see. Yeah, let's go ahead and set up the uh, the potion bars. <sighs> so we have inventory to go through yet. We've kind of looked at everything, you know, that is going on with this stuff. We saw all this. We haven't seen the potions. Um, we have some uh, pretty expensive scrolls here, a few of them. Six potions of greater regen. Heals the user from 120 to 180 health over 40 seconds. Scroll of Ice Storm rank 3, Cone of Cold rank 3, we could probably sell them to make some potion money. Scroll of Prayer of Healing rank 4, each alley within 20 yards gains hit points. Um, two Wyvern Poisons, coats the user's weapon with poison extracted from a Wyvern for 60 seconds. The poison deals an additional 10 poison damage with each strike. Let's see what we can actually use here. I'm going to not put these great ones on, on there. Essence of Ether, shatter the vial to create a poisonous cloud at the impact point with a three yard radius lasting for four seconds. Any creature within the cloud must make a DC 15 constitution saving throw or fall unconscious for up to three minutes. That's incredible. But, Thunderstone, um, let's see what we can actually put on our hot bars here. I don't want to use all these great potions. Flask of Glue, um, Draw poison, draw poison. Put the target creature to sleep for 120 seconds. Here, potions of regen. Heals the user for 34 health over 10, 20 seconds. We could probably put these on every. Oh, but the clicking's a little bit tricky. Put these on everybody's hot bar in the potion section, and we'll try to make it uniform. This shouldn't take too long, actually. And we have these rage potions. Increases user's strength by four while lowering armor class by minus four. Um, I could see Jarhild using a rage potion. Maybe even, well, that's probably about it. Potion of Shadows. Um, I guess anybody can use scrolls. All right, let's see what our oil of tag it. When thrown at a creature, this devious poison causes immediate unconsciousness that lasts for six minutes. That's crazy. Okay, Potion of Greater Healing. Um, Malice blinds the unfortunate victim for 120 seconds. Potion of Improved Healing. Here's a Potion of Restoration. You cleanse yourself of a single negative effect. Let's put that on there for everybody. Uh, maybe we can kind of do something like this to really keep them uniform. Alchemist Fire. Each creature within three yards of the impact takes one to four 
fire damage and must make a DC 15 deck saving throw or take additional 3 to 9 fire damage over 8 seconds. We can give those to our rogues. Should have alchemist fire. That could be the next one. Potion of healing. Um, that can go in slot 5. So I think this will be pretty good once we're all set here. Healer's Kit stabilizes an ally, reviving them with 30 to 40 hit points. Um, what Healer Kit in number 6. And Larithar can even have a Healer's Kit. You know what, everybody have a Healer's Kit, honestly. Probably except Jarhild, because if she goes down, well, it's probably over. But Misty Stare Drills. These pickled eel-like fish are seasoned with herbs and spices. Eating this will grant plus 15 maximum hit points for two minutes. Flask of oil. Vulnerable to fire damage or pass a DC 15 dexterity saving throw become prone. Flask of acid. Take three to 12 acid damage and has minus two AC for 16 seconds. We'll give them to our rogues. In number seven. And the more important stuff like the scrolls and stuff, I guess we'll use by hand. Um, I don't really use the food too much. Grants like hit points, maximum hit points and stuff. I don't know. Um, maybe I should use it more. Let's see what else we could put on here. Uh, Plus two charisma, plus two intelligence, plus two dexterity. Um, we'll give that to a Lydia. And let number seven. Increases uses crit range by three for 60 seconds. Um, Malice Blinds. We'll put Malice down here in number 8. I'm sorry, number 9. Number 8 was... Um, Cat's Grace. What was 7? Alchemist Fire. Yeah. Okay. And in 10 goes... Um... Calls upon the caster's deity to heal 7 to 10 hit points. Not too great. Probably sell those. Plus 10 sneak for 60 seconds. We have the rage potions, the regen, the drow poisons. Flask of glue. Any creatures inside the glue suffer minus 70% minus of movement speed. Um... Thunderstones. We'll give those to our rogues. We'll give it to Olivia too. And the filters of self-resurrection. Usable even when dead. This filter stabilizes the user and revives them with 30 to 40 health. Let's put potions of improved regen down here. Um And then we'll put like improved health at the end or something, but that looks pretty good. Greater region, okay. Malfurl's journal. Oh, the writings of the necromancer Malfurl. Reading these pages grants the user one point to invest permanently in ability scores. Um, a vial full of green liquid. We've got some different stuff here that goes for quests and stuff. I don't know the extent of it all quest items then we've got miscellaneous i don't know about selling these either it's a bunch of like just <clears throat> different little things and that should be it so i'd say that's good for now um so um we can go back to 
proper bars. And that should be good. Now, let's go ahead and do a little bit of selling, maybe. Um, oh yeah, the old tome about alteration. Let's look at that first. What would that be? Mothrills? Um, Alteration Observations, Volume 1. Yeah. Volume 1 of 3, written by B.H. Um, okay, so let's give that to her then, I guess. Found this old tome about alteration. It looks fairly valuable. Alteration, you see? Let's see. Her eyes widen, revealing her surprise. She quickly composes herself. This is quite a find, though I see it is only one of three of a three-volume set. Still, I'll reward you well for this. Were you to come across the full series, that would indeed be most impressive. Okay, um, what did we get? Uh... Huh, it doesn't actually say we got anything, but okay. Um... Mofferl's journal, uh, one ability point. I guess I should use it on myself. Um, I don't know. I don't know where I'd put that ability point. We'll think about it, but, um, okay, so that's that. Oh, let's try to sell to her now. See if we can. Okay, she's got scrolls, as predicted. Some really good ones, too. Stone skin, disintegrate. Um, I don't know if we'll ever need some of this stuff, but... Let's check our highest value items. We've got Cone of Cold, rank 3. Elemental robes, plus 5 all cold damage dealt. Um... Plus five, all lightning damage dealt. Breakneck helm, 12% cooldown reduction. Cape of Faith, plus one intelligence. Um, deals one radiant damage to attackers. The Zerbic Baldric, plus three. See, I don't really want to get rid of all this stuff just yet. Um, toxic Hand Axe. We can probably get rid of that. Tempest Staff. Probably get rid of that. Don't know if I'll get rid of the blue ones. Um, Whispering Tooth. 10% chance to hit on hit on hit to silence. Um, plus one striker. Faithful choker, plus one all radiant damage dealt. We can just sell that. Plus one carver, two to eight slashing. Eh. Smasher, plus one knife, it's a dexterity weapon, plus one basher, it's just a club, um, wolf's bane axe, plus two hit and damage versus beasts, um, and get rid of the basher, 25% acid damage resistance, um, Bronze Crown. Crowns such as these are often worn by nobles with minor ranks and small lands. As such, it's somewhat less common than your typical jewelry. Less common, we'll keep it. Here's just a regular band we can sell. Potion of Fire Breath. Um, never know when we'll use this stuff. Um, Pearls of the Moon. Made with a grape rarely seen outside the Dale Lands, this silky smooth and sweet wine has an unusual green color. Drinking this will cause intoxication for 30 seconds. Conjure Monster. Alchemist Fire. Studded Leather Armor. Um, I didn't sell that. I guess we'll start using the food more. 15 hit points is pretty significant, actually. We don't have many hit points, now that I think about it. 
All right, so that's pretty much all I want to get rid of for right now. We can adventure on from here. Um, we have 1,100. We should probably go buy some potions now that we used so many last episode. Um, let's head outside for the first time. Oh, a little bit choppy on my end, but it's cleared up. All right, here we've got an armor merchant. Let's check out Sharia. Welcome, friends. Let me see what you have. Finesse cloak, plus one dexterity saves. Bolstering hood. Plus one vest. Stealth disadvantage. Armor class one, plus one armor class. Boots of subtlety, plus two to sneak. So actually some pretty interesting stuff. Plus four charisma regal cloak. Oh, we can't even afford this stuff. That's crazy high uh, stuff. Um, the elemental robes, cold damage, lightning damage. Let's sell the cold damage robes. I don't care. Bong bong. Um, we have 1900. You have the Stoneforge Crown. Plus one perception. The bludgeoning damage is pretty nice, but that not for her. Um, you know, he could use the Boots of Subtlety. Oh, I like the 10% action speed over that. Yeah, I think we're pretty much good to go from armor standpoint. Here we have a shady deal, Birkins, weapon merchant. Welcome, what can I get you? Blessed rapier. Plus one talon. Um, blade of infection, deals nine poison damage over 10 seconds. Rusting Striker deals 9 acid damage over 10 seconds. Basher of Aberration Sling versus Aberration Creatures. Wow, Goliath Club. Causes force damage to multiple nearby targets on hit. Wow, great club. Um, don't think there's going to be anything here that we could is better than what we're using, really. For some reason she's got her staff out. Let's switch that over to bow. Uh, battle axe of rusting. We're gonna keep him with bows for now. The rusting the uh the Rusting Striker will probably be an upgrade. It's two yards less um, range. It's a short bow. Much less damage, but plus one to hit and damage. And then deals the nine acid damage over ten seconds. Eh. Nothing we really need from Branox, so let's close. Let's come to Birkins. What are you buying? Let's see. Okay, she's the one with the poisons. Plus some different interesting stuff. Plus one reaver. Serpent venom. Wow. Yeah, we bought some pretty expensive poisons and stuff. Swift. It's a rapier. Increases action speed, but at the cost of 100% weakness to physical attacks. Wow. A dulling shield. 35% piercing damage resist, 25% acid damage resist. Okay, um... Right, let's come over here to the potion seller, and who's that? Potion merchant, jewelry dealer. Hello, what can I get you? Show me your wares. Um...
Plus 5% action speed, I like that. Ring of quickness. Loop of stamina. Ring of alarm. Plus one perception, plus one radiant damage dealt. I would replace that with the daredevil ring. Um. Wow, look at that burglar amulet. Oof. Um. What are you wearing as a choker? Ten percent slashing damage resist. Plus one radiant damage. Plus one perception. I should maybe buy that and then sell a little bit more of my stuff. Like... Maybe the Cape of Faith. The elemental boots will hang on to. Ember Pendant. Plus eight charisma. Let's go ahead and get rid of the Cape of Faith. Yes, it gives plus one intelligence, but deals one radiant damage to attackers. Not really too interested in it. Hamet probably has better. Breakneck Helm. Nobody seems to be able to use it. Mm, she can use it, but... 12% uh, cooldown reduction. You know what? This what We're going to probably put that on. Um... Critical range plus one is pretty good with 18 to 20 is a crit range, but if we put this on, um, it goes to 19 to 20, but uh, check her out. It does um, give her, you know, 12% cooldown reduction. Steadfast gloves, paralyze immunity, I want to hang on to that. Um, let's go ahead and save while we're at it, making progress. We'll get into the action soon enough, guys, no doubt about it, but I do want to kind of get all prepared first. Um, plus one perception. Um, the loop of stamina is pretty good, plus two to sneak. Plus one to constitution saves. We should do some sneaking. Uh, we'll come back to it because we're going to need a few potions. Right away. You looking for potions? Perhaps if you have what I need. Restoration, um, healer's kits, potion of healing. Looks like there's only one left. Scrolls are automatically added to the quick bar. No, they're not. Potion of greater healing. One, two, oh, improved healing. Okay. And another potion of greater healing for 30 to 40 health. Now let's just quickly finish off our bars here. The very last one can be improved healing. I don't think we put improved healing down here. We just have healing. Um. Greater healing. Healing. Potion of improved healing. We'll put that in the very last bar. So, my goal this time playing is to be not to use so many potions all the time, but try to heal and use scrolls and different tactics. Oh, what am I doing? Putting them on the wrong bar. Jar Hill, let's get rid of that. Where'd they go? There they are. I had them. No? There they are. So this is just going to set us up for combat very well. Alright, 
Now, if we hold Alt, we can see what we can click on and stuff. We have some quests. Here's armor and weapon repair. Um, there's a way into the sewers. There's the shark jaw curio shop. Um, lots of different little nooks and crannies we can play about in. Apothecary. Blacksmith tools. Oh, there's something there. A vase. Are we allowed to take that? I'm not sure. Coals all seem, always seem to be lit and ready to go. Um, can I take that vase? Oh, 32 gold. A loop of alarm. Nice. There's our plus one percent uh, perception and a potion of regen. At once. Nice. So I'm going to put that perception potion on. Let me look at the character sheet. Huh, perception's not even a... a skill. What is perception, then? Huh. Well, I'm not gonna put it on you. I guess I would put it on... on you. Oh, that's right, you don't have any rings or anything. Plus one to perception. We'll want to use his search when searching. Around for secrets and stuff. Let's see, that's just a safe house. Rolona's potion, so there's more potions. Um, there's the cutlass, we can go meet Soranil. Empty crates, there's an apothecary. The shark jaw. Um, there's find the missing logbook pages. Rare vintage. Search the vintner's keep for the case of wine. We could get into that. Although I don't know. Karsten's imports. Sack residence. Sherm's herbs. Uh, ruined building. I hope it's not choppy. If it's choppy, I'll definitely check after this episode, see if it's choppy. And make the proper adjustments. Um, weapon rack is empty. Try call. Welcome to my shop. Can you look to see if I have anything that can be reforged? Okay, let's open her up and see what you got. Looks like you have parts for a dagger, but you're going to need a bit more to make it whole. Alright, anything else? This is interesting. I think you've got parts of the Bow of Hungering. Nasty wee weapon. Unfortunately, you don't have everything I need to reforge it. Alright, what else? I see you have part of a very powerful staff here, but without the rest of it, not much I can do. So we can reforge some items. Here's something. You got all the parts I need to make a fine scimitar. 3,000 gold. What do you say? Do I look rich to you? I don't have that kind of gold. Maybe you can make something else. Okay, let's open her up and see what you got. Hmm, nope. I don't see anything I can do for you. Come back if you ever find something interesting and useless. Okay, so he can make a scimitar. Huh. For 3,000 gold. Well, that's going to tell me... Vanity Items Merchant to go make 3,000 gold right quick. Polek. Hello, what can I get you? Belt of Comfort. Oh, different, um... Different things. Wow, plus two to sneak and 10% bludgeon damage resist. That's very nice. But it's also very expensive. We're halfway there. Um, selling a scroll of Cone of Cold. 53 foot wide arc and 20 yards long. Each creature in the area must make a DC 14 constitution saving throw or take 23 to 83 cold damage and have to make a secondary DC 14 constitution save or be frozen in place for 6 seconds. A creature that makes a successful save takes half damage. Spell fizzle of an, you have to have at least an intelligence of 14. Um, Ice Storm is pretty powerful. Spell fizzle 18. Wow. Um, 
How much do one of these go for? Whoa, quite a bit. 611 a piece. Plus we all acid damaged out. Uh, let's just go ahead and sell that. Um, prayer of healing. Fiend slaying will keep. Owl's wisdom will keep. Stone giant strength plus six to strength. Whispering tooth, 10% chance on hits of silence. Improved regen, let's sell one of these, another one, and one more. We've got 3,100. Now, the only thing I'm worried about, I'm going to save first, so we can see what the scimitar is before actually committing to keeping it. So I'll come here, save, and uh, have him make us that scimitar. Here we go. Got all the parts I need to make a fine scimitar. 3,000 gold, what do you say? Make it so. All right, time to get the forge going. Go to light my smoke. Clank. Clank. Smash. Rumble. Clank. Okay, all done. Here you go, kid. Thanks, goodbye. What did we get? Why isn't this staying open? We got, that's not saying. Hmm. The scimitar we get is, um... Tauran's Blaze. 1 to 6 slashing, plus 1 to hit and damage. Deals 1 to 6 fire damage. 25% chance on hit to cause withering, and it's a one-handed light finesse weapon. Whoa. That's nice. Mm-hmm. But it requires proficiency scimitar, so you know what I'm going to do? If I have this right, I can come here and probably pick up scimitar for cost of one point. So, let's use Mafaril's journal. Did I use it? No, it says zero ability points. Right click. Aha. Uh -huh. Alright, let's uh, use it. Okay. No ability points. Has it already been used, I wonder? Oh, an ability... No. can't be used can I pull it down here huh can other characters possibly use it since I can't what did I do with it Drop it somewhere? No, I put it in the barn, it disappeared. I guess it's gone then. Oh, yeah, I got in a bit a character point is what happened. My bad guys. Um Factors such as confidence and eloquence can represent a charming or commanding personality. Used anytime you must be persuasive, whether it be hostile or friendly, it affects your buying and selling prices. Paladins use charisma to determine the potency of their spells. Wisdom reflects how attuned you are to the world around you and represents perceptiveness and intuition. Spells of the divine nature use wisdom to determine their potency. And wisdom also helps in locating hidden objects. We could go intelligence. Arcane spells use intelligence to determine damage as well as their difficulty checks. Oh, I really wanted a, an ability point. 
Constitution could help. I only have 45 health. Oh, everybody gets a point? No. Why is character lit up for everybody? Hmm. Oh, because someone has a point. So I'll get Scimitar next time, I think. But let's, um... I don't know. Another point of dexterity. Let's see what my AC would go to. It stays at 15. Oh, it won't show me until I apply it. Where's my armor? Right there. Armor class 1. Um... Keep it a plus four modifier. I think I'm gonna go constitution. Get a little few more hit points. Or not. <laughs> okay. Alright, so we got ourselves. Oh yeah, who's gonna use it for now? I guess Jarhild. Is she the only one who can use Scimitar? It looks like it. I know her second is a scimitar. Gwenin's blade. One-handed light finesse based on strength. Oh, this is based on dexterity. No, it isn't. Light finesse strength. Um, they're very similar, except this does one to six fire instead of one to four acid. 25% chance to cause withering instead of 25% necrotic damage resist. Let's go ahead and give her Tauren's Blaze. Whoa. Look at that. Plus she's got the Sloth Shield. Which makes her an absolute tank in this uh, in this get up. Doesn't mean a sell the other stuff. We need a great sword because I'm pretty sure there's a there's a shrine outside. Can I go upstairs? Bedroom. Cabinet empty. There's pretty sure there's a shrine outside um, in a cave nearby that I have to sacrifice a great sword to. So let's go to a weapons dealer. Maybe Karsten's Imports. No, that might be a quest place or something. Sherm's Herbs. Um, who's the weapons dealer? Branix. Uh, we need a great sword. Pike. Long sword. Scimitar. Short spear. Rhyme Brand. Another light finesse scimitar. Deals 9 to 36 cold damage over 10 seconds. Wow, and that's only 2,700. I could potentially get that. Oh, I don't need it. That's a nice weapon, though. Um, okay, so... Is there anyone else that sells weapons... Oh, potion cart. The vendor's cart is full of ornate bottles. The solution inside is probably worth less than the bottles themselves. Um, Birkins. We're just going to have to find a... Uh, a, um... Great sword. Malona's potions... Guild Hall. I think we've been in there. Pretty sure we have been. Alright, so where do I want to go? Um, if we do Sorinil, go to the Cutlass to meet in Sorinil. That's the next move. Um, if we check our journal by hitting J... Mothral's portal led you back to camp and sleep led you back to the nightmare realm. Your first task is to find Sorinel with the cutlass and fill him in on what you learned from Mothral's ghost. 
and Mafril was we don't know yet we'll go over our characters too um, you defeated Mafril and his spirit was calm long enough for him to give you information on your guild before his undead rage returned he used his power to open a one way portal Taking the portal will lead you back to camp and so much need to rest. Mothril, the great and powerful necromancer, is dead. He now exists as an enraged poltergeist with all the powers he commanded in life and a complete disdain for all li things living. Hobbit thinks if you can manage to subdue him, his rage may subside, allowing you a chance to speak with him. From what Hamid guesses, you'll have to avoid traps, failed experiments, and undead monstrosities as you scour the catacombs for Mafro himself. Shockingly, Hamid's ritual failed and the party was teleported to a trap-laden dungeon meant for thieves, intruders, and those who fail rituals. You must find your way out of the dungeon and search for Mafro's library. So, Mafro... Gildedite Chapter House, I guess we... You suspect the Gilded I stole the missing pages during their attack, used that information to attack your caravan, and none of the other guild members out on jobs. Finding the logs will give you valuable information on where the survivors might be. Okay. Okay. So let's look at our characters so far, our companions. Elidia... Maethelen, Maethelen, a moon elf cleric of Sehanin Moonbo. Elidia has seen more pain and loss in her 140 years than even most elves see in a lifetime. But her faith in Sehanin Moonbo, a goddess of the moon and dreams, keeps her mind centered and her heart hopeful. With her ever loyal friend and bodyguard Larathar by her side, she uses her talents with a bow and her goddess's blessings to make up for her own past mistakes. Larathar Golgrin, a gold dwarf rogue, rarely gets the honor of traveling with one such as Lydia May Mayfellin. And Larathar will never take that honor for granted. A Luskin resident with a penchant for drink and debauchery, Larathar rarely goes without a snide word or a sharp insult. Except when it comes to Lydia. Without her, Larathar is a cup purse, a brawler, and an occasional second story man. Without her, however, he gets to be with her, however, he gets to be a hero. A snide, wisecracking, and somewhat greedy hero, but a hero nonetheless. Jarhild Stoneforge, a shield dwarf as tough as an ox, and as stalwart as a stone wall. Jarhild traps on armor and shield to fight for the ones she considers friends. As a member of the Order of the Burning Dawn, she has the opportunity to protect the innocent and bring justice to the evil, and make a little coin doing it. She's wise, powerful, and experienced in battle tactics, and when the people she loves are threatened, there is little in this world that can withstand her fury. As a trained soldier, Jarhild is always prepared to do battle, be it in the front lines of a skirmish or the back room of a tavern. When not on the ready for imminent combat, however, she's ready to kick back and blow off steam with the rest of the hard-bitten warriors. She fights hard and she plays hard, and woe be unto the poor soul who comments on the way she holds herself, the way she dresses, or the way she hefts her sword, as a dwarf who has faced down orc hordes, repelled incursions of giants, and even held fast against a dragon ambush, Jarhill doesn't feel a need to explain herself to anyone. She is who she is, a force to be reckoned with. Amit Shah it takes a lot for a young wizard to be ex exiled from Long Saddle, the home of the famously eccentric Harpel, Harpel Wizards. Harpel Wizards. But Hamid Shah managed to pull it off. He's a very talented wizard, but his attention to detail leaves something to be desired, to say the least. He's young and eager and desperate to prove himself, but, well, necromancy isn't the most widely accepted magical specialty, and it's hard to find a mentor who won't go all dine upon fearsome hatred of the undead, of the dead, on you. When he sees a chance to accompany the heroes into battle, he takes it as a chance to prove himself and make some friends in the bargain. Then we have Sir Banagar, or the Gilded Eye. 
Um, the Burning Dawn, which is what we're a part of. Um, we'll go over this quickly. Burning Dawn, founded more than a century ago by the brothers Roth and Gareth Dawn Treader. The Order of the Burning Dawn was created as a group of questing adventurers searching for treasures long thought buried. After the brothers' deaths, the guild's leadership determined that the guild's survival required them to take on external work in order to finance their expeditions. Over time, the guild's original purpose was lost, and it became a fraternal order of adventurers seeking shelter, brotherhood, and honest work, escorting caravans, protecting clients, finding lost heirlooms, and returning kidnapped children. All that survives now of the Founder's original vision of the rituals, symbols, and code of brotherhood that harkens back to the first days of the Guild. The Burning Dawn maintains Guild Halls in Waterdeep, Luskin, and Neverwinter, as well as safe houses in ten towns. Far from a wealthy organization, the Burning Dawn depends on favors from past clients to maintain its holdings, and its most lavish Guild Hall, the one in Luskin, is nonetheless a simple building with only the most humble of trappings. The Gilded Eye, founded two decades ago by the paladin Javan Tarmikos, the Gilded Eye is an order of devout, some may say zealous, knights and clerics of Helm. Seeing the influence of demonic forces in the world, Tarmakos became frustrated with what he perceived as unfaithful caution on behalf of the Order of the Gauntlet in dealing with demons and their servants. Tarmakos left the Order and founded the Gilded Eye with the purpose of striking preemptively against demonic influence to weaken and crush evil before it is allowed to take root. Under Tarmakos' philosophy, innocence may suffer, but if that's the price paid to end the threat of the Abyss, then it is a price worth paying. The Gilded Eye's creed is extreme, but it has recruited a number of paladins, clerics, and other devout warriors of Helm nonetheless. The Order also has its share of members who join simply for the chance to battle demons and glory in conflict, no matter the cost. Tarmakos ruthlessly weeds out those who whose faith in Helm is not absolute. Considering those members who do not have Helm's deepest wishes at heart to be demonic agents and traitors against the Guardian. The Gilded Eye has a small chapter houses throughout the Sword Coast. Has small chapter houses. The largest is a keep in the Neverwinter Wood from which the Order keeps watch over Luskin and the areas surrounding the City of Sails. Sir Banagar. A mountain of muscle and polished steel, Sir Ruthrin Banagar is a paragon of faith and courage, if not of virtue. As a lieutenant within the Knights of the Gilded Eye and a devout cleric of Helm, Sir Banagar serves his sworn deity with conviction that outweighs what others might consider to be moral concerns. He will fight, kill, and even murder to rid the world of demonic influence, according to the creed of the Gilded Eye. Banagar considers Sir Javan Tarmakos to be a legend and a great man, whose word transcends that of the rest of Helm's clergy to the purest truth, that to protect the world from demons, one must be willing to fight on the demon's level. Sir Banagar is highly skilled and invested with Helm's divine power. His faith is unshakable and his heart cannot be swayed. Javan Tarmakos could not ask for a more suitable lieutenant, and the Prince of the Abyss could not find a more devoted enemy. <clears throat> We can check out the deities at some point, too. This is pretty cool. Um, Saiyanine Moonbow. An elven goddess of the moon and dreams. In some myths, the daughter, and in others, the consort of Corellin Lavrithian, ruler of the elven pantheon of gods. Saiyanine's tears are said to have mingled with Corellin's blood and given life to the elven race. Pretty cool. Um, I think we pick a deity in the game, if I'm not mistaken. A lot of depth to this, but basically I just want to go over a few more things before we start actually questing. I think next time we're probably ready to um, either go to the Cutlass or search. Um, we have a new quest, Alteration Observations, or search the Vintner's Keep for the Case of Wine. I don't know how difficult that's going to be, but um, see how long we've been playing. If I save game... Um, 49 minutes. Wow. Travel it goes fast. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Next time, like I said, we will get right into things. Um, there's not much more to research or anything. Uh, we can... Um... Do something. I'll think about what to do. If we look at the world map quickly... Um... You know, when we go to the, um... Uh... How do we get there? What's this? Oh, Faerun. The Vintner's Keep. 
<clears throat> Rumored to be the last home of an ancient Moon Elf winemaker, this keep was used to store the legendary Jasmarium Shadow Wine. The air here is dry and cool, kept so by enchantments placed here long ago. So it's up here by the Lurkwood. Wouldn't be a huge, I guess it's a journey, but we already went to Tomb of the Ashen Priest, so pretty cool though. Um, we'll probably head that way. So I hope you join me for that and continue watching. We're going to have a lot of fun, guys, so we're just easing into it. But I do want to thank you for watching and joining me today. Um, I do hope you enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned. Like I said, much more to come. Um, much love, peace, and joy, guys. Next time, like I said, adventure awaits. And there's a lot of it here. So hope to see you guys then. Bye-bye.